Welcome to our show. As you know, I am your girl Kirby Love, and this is Liz Philip, better known as Liz the Poet. On this show, we get to know different solution artists, also more focused on the spoken word artists and poets. Today, we're going to get to know Liz a little bit better on her journey in poetry and why she loves it so much. So, Liz, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How about yourself? I am doing lovely. I'm so happy that you joined us on the show today. Absolutely, it's, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. I think we met a couple of times in different poetry forums, slams, and that kind of thing. The first mm -hmm. time I recall seeing you perform, however, is on in the Ubuntu yes. poetry competition. Yes, so we competed against each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you came first, I came second. Yeah. At the time, I was a little bit, you know, like, why did she win? But then I actually listened to you mm -hmm. um, and what you said, and I was like, wow. This is actually moving. She deserves it, even though you know it's against me, but it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, and your, yours was really good as well. You know, I I really like the poem Black Woman. It was really powerful, really amazing. Thank you. And I was amazed about how much you memorized. Yeah, yeah. I think it was about five to <laughs> about five to six minutes. Five to six a really minutes. long poem. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. And what was it about again? Just um, it was basically about trying to empower uh, young Caribbean men and women. So it was a very, it took a lot of effort to even write the piece and it, it took even more effort to memorize it. So that was, that was indeed very, very difficult for me to do. Yeah, I can imagine the amount of energy that goes into it because you, as much as you're trying to um, show other people, you have to put a little bit of yourself in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it takes a lot of skill, a lot of talent. Yeah. Okay, so what exactly inspires you to, you know, write poetry, do what you do? Um, for me, basically, um, my thing is when I was really young, um, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in a, an environment that was, you know, really toxic. It wasn't nurturing enough for me to express myself freely. So um, one of the things I had difficulty with was just um, speaking about my emotions and expressing myself. So I, I started to, to write at a really tender age um, during my teenage years. Okay. And that kind of gave me some kind of relief, I would say, sort of. Um, just being able to put everything I feel on paper or into words. Okay. So um, yeah, that was, that was it for me. That was so the start. So you, would you call that journaling or writing in a diary? Or writing on a piece of paper and throwing it away? Um, what, which, which one? It was a mixture of things. At first it was kind of journaling, or just writing, playing out, you know, mm -hmm. writing how I felt in the moment. Um, but then it, I, I started to feel uh, a passion for poetry. Okay. Um, just listening to other poets and um, going to shows. And um, it kind of gave me that kind of inspiration I would see. So I started to not just write a journal, I started to actually write poetry, make words make sense, mm -hmm. um, you know, on paper. So yeah, that was... So did you ever let anybody into seeing that side? Like what, when did you start letting people know that you're actually right? Um, it was when I went to uh, Head Funk, which was a show. I think that was the very first show that I attended. Um, I saw, you know, persons like Felicia Montoot, Kendall Hippolyte, Glenn Chalry, those veteran poets, and they were really, really good. So I felt like I just wanted to put myself out there in that light. Um, at first I was really um, nervous, okay. I was afraid of what people might think, um, also just really conscious about if my work was okay, if that sounded right. Um, but yeah, that was that was one of the first platforms where I expressed myself. I was also a member of the Sendo Sharatis Forum. Okay. So um, when I started going there and going to, um, they had different um, workshops, uh, just helping writers become better at their craft. So that was another place that I started to share my work. Okay, that's that's interesting. So yeah. did you do well you definitely placed yourself out there, which was great. Yeah. But like did you do most of it on your own or did you have somebody walking through all this with you? Um I at first when I went to Head Funk, I, I went up on stage and I did something, I read something from my book and you know everybody was clapping and everything. <laughs> but so um, it's a pretty it's a very supportive yeah, um, it's a, environment. It was a very so 
intimate space and, and place yeah. yourself. Those, those spaces are really important. You know, it was really, they, they had it at a, a cafe in Castries, so okay. it was very small and intimate. Um, but then when I went to the Semija Writers Forum, they actually helped persons to, you know, they would listen to the poems and help you improve your grammar, improve your speech, improve the way that you deliver. Okay. Um, also, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of Pondam Creations. Mm -hmm. It's another, it was a poetry slam that I entered as well, um, with Kinsley Shalmine, and they also helped persons just improve on the way that they deliver their work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was, that was a very important start for me. Yeah, I think I, I participated in the Pom Dam one actually. It was, it was, it was um, spontaneous because mm -hmm. I showed up and um, there was someone there who knew that I performed. Oh, right? Okay. So I ended up being one of the judges. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like uh, probably 20, 21 at the time. Oh, okay. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. Not gonna do it. <laughs> but I did it and I find it was very different being on the opposite side. Uh, yeah. Um, where you're not, you're actually listening to persons mm -hmm. and then helping them improve. Yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't realize I knew all of this. So I guess they yeah. placed me in this um, setting for a reason. So it, any little step, mm -hmm. it definitely helps you grow. Yeah, it does help you grow as, as, an, as an artist. It helps you grow in your work in many different ways. So yeah, definitely. So you mentioned how you definitely place yourself out there. Mm -hmm. I find I, that's very admirable of you because mm -hmm. most times um, persons who are in the arts, not all, but a lot, tend to um, shy away from you know telling persons about what they do, showing mm -hmm. that you know comfort zone in the most private parts of themselves. So that's, mm -hmm. that that is amazing, yeah. right? Um, but did you have any? Um, what was like one of those major challenges? that you think you would have faced? Um, I think it was probably the lack of support, especially from family. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're, when you're a writer or maybe a musician, an artist, um, you know, people who don't understand the arts on a deep level, they don't really get it, they don't understand. So it's really hard for them to even support. So at that time, I didn't really have anybody pushing me and saying, you know what, go for it. And you know, you sound really good or your stuff is really good. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to, you know, go out there and just even read my book to anyone. So, so that's why so, the gym in yeah, that we came in. Yeah. So. so that was really, really challenging. Just not having the, the right system, the right support. Okay. So if anybody is listening right now, what would you have any advice for them? Um, I would say, you know, if you're a writer, just go for it. Even if you don't have the right support system, because um, one of the things I realized it's something that is not. Um, you know, it's a, especially in St. Lucia, it's not something that is being supported enough, um, especially by persons who, you know, can support, um, even if it's just something really small. Definitely. And also just, you know, people just in general. If you see someone who is talented, who has that skill, um, even if you, you're not able to support them financially, but at least, you know, just help them um, a word of encouragement, Anything as small as it is, just to push them forward. Definitely, we need more yeah. of those spaces. Yeah, Speaking absolutely. of those spaces, mm -hmm. I know that you're actually one of one of the founders of Dao Art. Yes, yes. Creating more spaces because Headfunk mm -hmm. is predominantly in the north of the mm -hmm. island, mm -hmm. so Dao Art is in the south. In the south, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, so you want to tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, actually. Um, but never got the chance to. Um, but then, uh, sometime last year, myself, uh, Kish Masseri and Masseri came together and we were like, you know what, let's, let's create that, that space um, because that's something that is lacking uh, in society and especially down in the South. Uh, you, you hardly hear of these groups, these spaces for young people. Okay. So it's something that I've always wanted to do and I'm really happy that we did uh, because it's really amazing to see all those young people come out and showcase their talent. Um, and the fact that we are giving them that that space to do that Definitely. and that is a very important thing to have these spaces to have that support to have people listen and understand you to have people to share the same views the same emotions and just to you know be there so to vibe. yeah to vibe it was to a vibe. It, it was a really nice vibe you know at, at first I and mean, then we continue the shows on a monthly basis um, so it's, it's really amazing. It's a, it's a really solid group and I hope that we continue to grow. I hope that we continue to, to give people and mostly um, 
young persons from the community and young persons mm -hmm. from the south and hopefully if we do get the right resources and the right support that we are able to help those persons grow in their work mm -hmm. and support them financially or some way yeah yeah i i think i attended one or two of mm -hmm. the shows so far I haven't you know how was it for you <laughs> but um i like the energy it's mm -hmm. um it was at one of the lounges it was more small yeah intimate, that's just which is which is mm -hmm. i find it's actually good because then persons who are new to performing mm -hmm. they will even if they would feel nervous, it'd be a little it, less Yeah, intense. it's yeah, it's it's a Because then imagine space. you have you <laughs> a big crowd and you're new. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was nice, intimate. The mm -hmm. crowd was very encouraging. Absolutely. Um, the host was quite encouraging mm -hmm. when she announced the different persons coming on. So yeah. I, I generally just liked the energy. Good vibes. So you couldn't have come and leave the same. Exactly. So <laughs> I like that. That is that is awesome. Yeah. But putting all. A little, a little some of the seriousness on the side. Let's mm -hmm. play a little game. Okay. Ready? <laughs> How do you feel about a freestyle? It's not a rap, but <laughs> but like just coming out from straight from the heart, just letting it flow. Um, I mean freestyle is is that's pretty new for me. Uh, that's that's not a style I'm familiar with, but yeah, I mean I can I can try something. <laughs> I can try to put a few lines together. Alright, let's see how it Yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna have probably a word or phrase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me think. What about love? Not love. Okay, love seems a little bit you know, cliche. cliche. So <laughs> we're gonna try something different. What about like laughter or happiness or laughter? Yes, like that. Hmm, laughter, happiness. Okay. Whichever word works better. Okay, or well, maybe I can incorporate both. Okay, <laughs> let me see. Okay, let me think. The sound of a child, the happiness coming from their voice, the joy from their soul. It's so deep and meaningful. It takes you into their world where you forget the problems the things that you face every day, the stress, it takes you into a deep journey where you just want to be free again. You learn to be happy even for a brief moment, even for a split second. You hold on to the very tiniest bit of joy you can find and imagine from a child who knows nothing, who is innocent, who is so naive about life. Just imagine a child. So you laugh with them, you tickle them, you giggle, you listen to the sound of their voices and it brings you into a world of freedom. So how was that? How do you think that was? Um, I mean, for my first time freestyling, I think it was not too bad. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'm happy to let you know it was the warm-up. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> it was oh, my warm -up. goodness. All right, so let's let's give another one. Um, how about um, wine? Wine. Right. So now there are two kinds of wine. Uh, yes. So <laughs> there is the drink, uh -huh. wine, and here we call gyration. Yeah. Wine. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let you choose. If you wanna put <laughs> that in there, it's all you. It's all you. Okay. So um, I won't put the gyration one because you know it can be a bit explicit. So. Hey, you know. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll stick to the the drinking wine. Okay. Okay. Smooth on your lips and your tongue red intimate passionate a dinner an anniversary something sweet semi-sweet delicious calming 
imagine going home after a long day and soaking in your tub bath salts in the water listening to your favorite songs the very best feeling you could imagine wine pleasure fulfilling amazing one sip and you bask in the presence in the moments that you cherish forever wine <laughs> okay how did i do so i guess that was a bit better <laughs> maybe it was going somewhere you know it definitely I was I, I i definitely like the stats yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say that i like the stats because you said you didn't want to do the generation one because it would be too much today you start yeah i'm that like, intense yeah. i was like okay Okay. Honestly, I didn't know it was good. I just went to it. <laughs> that's that's the point of the first time. Yes. Maybe just just mm -hmm. come out. Um, I was gonna say one more, but since that one was so good, I was gonna <laughs> two more. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, you don't. You I can't hear me today. <laughs> you, you warm it up. It, it, it's going good. It's going good. Um, how about uh, I don't know, school days. School days. Hmm. Let me see what I remember about school days. Hey, hey, don't make it seem like it was too long ago. You know? Yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but you know. <laughs> okay, school days. The days were our best. Because we as kids, we had no worry. We had nothing to be afraid of, ashamed of. We didn't have to worry about bills running up and down. We just took each day at a time. We enjoyed the games, the laughter, the fun, the excitement, the enjoyment. I remember teachers telling us things that we do. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna let this one be something that's like, you know, something we get off your chest, probably something you went through. Because I know as much as you could be detailed, mm -hmm. you could hide behind the woods eloquently. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, anything that just comes to mind, just lay it out. So, no topic. No just, topic. It's just you, just you. Okay. I remember days I couldn't speak, I choked up just thinking about it. The air in my lungs held me so deep. And then I took my pen, expressed myself, and there I found myself in the abyss. I just wanted to let loose the words that I was thinking, the way that I was feeling. I just wanted to give in. So I wrote. I write. I still write to understand myself, to fulfill myself, to satisfy myself. I let go. I let ink on paper. I let the word come out. Writing is something that is so amazing. Thinking things then letting them flow beautifully. That's crazy, but imagine not understanding yourself, not being able to express yourself, not being able to speak feeling paralyzed, feeling weak. But poetry, it gives you that high, that feeling where you let go of the past, that feeling where you let feelings not last. Because now you feel free, you feel at ease, you let go of everything that you once knew and everything that you once felt and you put it down 
you lay your burdens down on your book, on your phone, on paper, and you are now free. I try something, eh? I try something. I don't know if I try something. So, <laughs> I'm gonna just ask, did you practice this before you came no, here? No, to be honest, no, 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 You did not even <laughs> stutter. No, I was just thinking and I was just, you know. All right, that one was yeah. a good finale. I like yeah. it. I'm, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. <laughs> I, I think so there. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me ask, are you working on any um, new projects right now? Probably, you know, adding some more videos onto the socials? Yes, yeah, so um, right now I'm trying to just manage the Instagram and Facebook page for Thou Art. Um, okay. Just keeping persons engaged, letting them know what we're doing, what we're up to. Um, and also just getting more poets in. Okay. Um, right now I am also looking to work on my own craft. Um, I'm currently working on making some new videos about okay. some of my poems. Um, just to kind of give a visual, I think when people see things, yeah. you know, they understand it better. Um, you know, so I think it's something that, I've, well, it's actually something that I've always wanted to do, but now um, I have the platform to do it, I have the energy, I have the time, so I just want to devote my time into working on that. Um, also, we, myself and a friend of mine, we have a women empowerment brand. It's called Caribbean Queen Access. You guys can check it out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what we do is to create um, different apparel and um, different kinds of clothing just to uplift women. Um, and it's mainly Caribbean, so we do different flags. Um, so you guys can definitely check it out. So these are just a few of the projects that I'm working on. Right All right, and how do we find you? Is it Liz the Poet? Yeah, so you can find me Liz the Poet on Instagram, um, Liz Philip on Facebook, and also Liz the Poet on uh, YouTube. I don't have that much content yet on YouTube, no, uh, but yeah, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Awesome. And before you leave, I believe the audience would love to see one of your fully crafted pieces. So are yes. you gonna perform first before you leave? Absolutely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Take me back to the 90s Where friends and family fought with bare hands We knew nothing about guns unless it was from a movie on the old TV We could barely even see without fixing the antenna ten times a day And my grandmother would say Put her tights under your dress and fix your ribbons While she handed me a plastic lunchbox for school the good old days, I swear, were the best yet. Playing ring games and rounders and Chinese skip and running to class when the school bell ring because I was taught to be disciplined and obey every rule ever made and I was taught to pray. Take me back to the good old days. When I felt free walking the streets and stopping on the way home from school to buy ice lollies, fudge, and coffee tea from Miss Santilia. And school friends joined to play jackstones on the road, but we knew what was coming after. The whips that waited to lash our backs because why the hell school over at three and you're reaching home at six? We didn't care, still we did it. Because home felt like home that was more like it. My favorite was back then in the summer, when school closed and aunties and uncles dropped off all their children home to go and dwee but I'm more happy because my cousins come down and we roam in the tavern to catch crabs and big plums. Running from neighbor to neighbor, tree to tree, we don't care who see we. And when we reach home, boil some boyo in the biggest pan and my cousins and I licking the sauce that dripping down from our hands from the mango in sauce we make. And when food cook, granny called everybody to come get a plate. Boy, what I would give to go back to those days. Bring back teachers like Mrs. Dantes and Cassie and Samuel who taught us respect and morals and core values while making sure we're properly educated. Bring back principles like Marjorie Serie. You'll know that woman. So play. Take me back to that day 
up in Wyo where my grandfather sat in the shed washing boxes of green bananas and grapefruit and butter and dashing for my grandmother to sell by the market every Saturday. And I, a young child, naive as ever, only now realized the purpose of his labor. Why he stood in the heat hole making calls and his hands tired from scratching broomsticks. Why he climbed up the hill by Lenny so effortlessly with sweat dripping down his face when I finally understood it was so very late. And now I wish, as a mother, I could raise my child in that kind of world, one that no longer exists because now we walk the same streets, sprayed with orange markings by the police and yellow tape and red stains from suns that bleed from the strike of a cutlass or shot from a gun. And now you can't trust anyone, not the police or customs or the government, every corner is corruption. Women holding their heads and crying in agony, broken homes with mothers and children, but no daddy. And I wonder, where is God in all of this? Wondering if he has forgotten about us. No, it's us who forgot about him, building walls of hatred and selfishness and anger while praying for life to get better. The same ones hating and killing instead of loving each other. And now I'm just standing here while giving you some real nostalgia. From the way things used to be to the way things are becoming. And is it getting any better? So I stand here wishing I could go back. Wishing I could go back. Wishing I could go back to the 90s. Thank you. What I am to poetry. Poetry, you are nothing without me. Without my nonsensical feelings wrapped in the pen I clutch with my fist, splashing onto this sheet, the mimicking ink that spills out my lyrics, the thoughts snatched from my cerebrum, and the sculpted masterpiece crafted with intense concentration. You are nothing without me. There's nowhere in this world you'd be if you hadn't slipped your hands up my mind stress as we echoed soft silhouettes of thoughts and clear in distant corners of the horizon. And me, putting down the rhythm of how good it felt when you made love to me, penetrating my thoughts and gyrating inside me, my brain filled with words from the high of cocaine, implanted and rooted in the blood flowing through my veins, becoming addictively insane. Oh, poetry. You have no idea what you've done to me. And while you brainwashed me till I made sense of every stanza as they came all over this blank piece of paper, it was me carving poetic librettos to a language you and I decipher. If it wasn't for the creative thoughts perfected by perfecting you, the emotional connection acquired with some perplexity seeping through, the effortless efforts of this lyrical intervention that you're susceptible to, there would be no you. There would be no metaphorical finesse to connect my rhythmical sonnet. There would be no rhythm in rhymes released as I deliver my poetic bliss. There would be no endless echoing of words in the depths of my mind as they flow fruitfully, vivaciously. There would be no you without me. No me combining delicious ingredients of thoughts eloquently. No me expressing expressions, jotting emotions incessantly. No poetry. No turning life to color with intellectual excellence painted on canvas, with the evidence of my presence reflecting the words I utter. So poetry, you need to accept the inevitable escapade of our destiny, that our souls are bonded and we cannot function separately. Poetry, you will remain part of me, but you are and will always be nothing without me. 
all right so you heard her yourself okay be sure to leave a comment to tell how much you loved her poem what your favorite parts were you know it takes a lot of energy to be an artist all right guys all right i just want to say thank you again for being on our show you're most welcome it was my absolute pleasure being here all right i'm sure you'll definitely encourage a few persons to step out and, yeah yeah you know indeed. put their work out there mm -hmm. indeed yes all right so if you are any artists out there spoken word poetry poet solution who wants their side their story to be heard you know and to feature their work as well be sure to hit me up on instagram at Kabri love if you want liz to do any performances for you or to contact her to be a part of the Dao Art poetry slam happening in the south of the island mm -hmm. you could also hit her up and also watch her work at liz underscore the poet um, on instagram all right guys thank you for watching and be sure to like comment and subscribe <laughs> bye